Well, it's all reboots and sequels on this channel, isn't it? Guess we're running out of ideas already. Last time we did a video about blue, it was this stuff. This is Stuart's micrometer engineer's marking. I had that in a little round tin, if you recall, a little round grey tin. And I hadn't until that point bought a tube. I'd always use the tins. The tubes are a bit more expensive, might even be twice the price. They are twice as good. The contents don't separate. They don't leak, crucially. Making a mess of uh, your toolbox or your shelf. There is a tin of Stuart's micrometer red on my shelf behind me. I'm not getting it down because it's leaked everywhere. And um, I haven't got around to tidying it up yet. So buy the tubes. They are, even if they're twice the price, they're twice as good. But today we are talking about this stuff, which is Dichem Steel Blue Layout Fluid. Now, if you say Dichem, people will generally know what you mean. Uh, it's become somewhat synonymous with uh, layout die, much like you know Hoover or uh, or something like that. So people will generally know that you mean layout blue, but this is, does come in other flavors. I know at least they do a red one. I suspect they do a yellow as well. Looking at the MSDS, the ingredients for this, not all of the MSDS sheets specify a pigment so i wonder if they do custom mixes as well but um yeah that's uh what we're looking at today and it's used for putting a layer on chunks of metal like this this is quite a big block of um of bright steel but it's used for putting a layer on here that you can mark out layout lines uh, center holes that kind of thing thing on or even making notes on here you can note down dimensions and, and stuff like that now, you could use something like this. It's a Milwaukee ink tool. I'm not shilling for Milwaukee. I'm not a big fan of their tools. I've got a, a very nice a very nice tape measure I bought off them that lasted all five minutes. Looks pretty, though. Now, you can use something like this for bright steel or, or bright metal, anything that doesn't have mill scale on it, to mark your lines out. And for rough work, that's going to be fine. You know, it's not the thinnest line. It's not the thickest line. But if you're just sort of cutting bits off, cutting things to a rough length, that'll do you. For anything that does have mill scale, this is a chalk pen. So shake it up, press it down, and you get a nice thick white line. So if I'm doing things like welding or, or cutting black steel, this is the pen I'll use. And the nice thing about this stuff as well is that it's water soluble. So if we grab a baby wipe, I keep, load, I keep baby wipes in the workshop because we don't have running water down here. So I've got something to clean my hands with. Actually, they're very good. You can see that wipes off nicely. The ink tool, on the other hand, needs some kind of spirit. So acetone in this case. Um, let me go and uh, find some nail polish remover. That's all this, all this stuff is. It's just a um, Poundland nail polish remover. And that will take these lines off. Mostly <laughs> take these lines off. So... I don't know if you can see a line in the center here. A very, very faint line in the center there is the result of the previous take going wrong and <laughs> me having to redo it. So perhaps not the best thing to use on a, a sort of finished surface. Well, I suppose if you're still machining, is it going to be a finished surface? I don't know. It's up to you. It's, it's your, your thing. So once this is dry... And you should be cleaning the surface that you're about to apply this to. Uh, Dichem do a cleaning agent. I haven't looked at the ingredients for that, but I suspect it's probably something like acetone. It'll be some kind of alcohol anyway. And you let it dry. Now it's nice and clean. And I've rubbed all my, my fingers all over it. And in the tub here, we have attached to the cap a brush. And you can just lay out the fluid with a brush. It's very much like putting on nail polish, funny enough. Uh, and it smells like nail polish. This should give you a hint as to what's actually in on the ingredients list. Now the last one I did this, it came out splodgy. That was down to me not cleaning it properly before applying the blue. That's the other thing, these, these bristles are very stiff, so layout fluid will flick everywhere if you're not careful. Got all this nice camera equipment and uh, sound recording and all that. And I'm flicking ink all over all of it. And so we've got a bit of, bit of dried fluid there as well. It's come off of, the, uh, off of the threads on the cap. 
And yes, if you had a nice a nice big bottle with a big opening on the neck, you could just dip a bigger brush in here and do this in a couple of swipes. Oh, this is what I'm talking about, it didn't come out uneven. And once this is completely covered, we'll leave it dry for a couple of minutes. And we can try scribing out some lines. And hopefully now this is nice and dry. Yeah, it feels pretty dry. And you can scribe in whatever you need. So you can take a, something like a square and a scribe. And you should get a nice crisp line. You can obviously mark out whole centers and things like that. I suppose if you had curves and and uh, whatnot, you could just take a, a perhaps a compass or a protractor or something and, and draw around it. But it really is as simple as that. It just makes marking up metal fairly easy. That was a short video, though I suppose we could do the DIY version like we did with the Engineer's Blue. Though that wasn't terribly successful. And we'll start with the data sheet here. It's been 20 years since I've done any chemistry and that was really limited to things that go boom or bang so bear with me I'm, I'm not a chemist and uh, it took me a little while to figure out what does what. So starting at the top the ethyl alcohol essentially methylated spirits flashes off fairly quickly it's a cheap bulk solvent. The butyl acetate which makes up well sorry this makes up 40 to 50 percent of the mix the butyl acetate makes up 30 to 40 percent, and apparently that's used to regulate, or uh, I suppose the, the 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 ratio of that to that somehow regulates the drying time. The butanol, I've got my notes. I've actually got my notes here on the little screen, so that reduces viscosity and provides enhanced flow and leveling characteristics. So I suppose that's to do with the actual uh, the actual stuff leveling out. Maybe keeping it a bit more workable, so it's more like a uh, plasticizer or retarder. Cellulose nitrate, or gun cotton, and that only makes up 1-5%, to 5 actually, yeah, so, so these only make up sort of 1-5% to 5 of the mix. So that's this is kind of a modifier. The cellulose nitrate seems to be the carrier for the pigment. You have isopropanol, again, I think this is the, if I have a look, isopropanol, that's just a solvent, so I guess that's another modifier that changes the the characteristics of the layout dice in some respect. Uh, and the propyl acetate is the solvent for the nitrocellulose. So this will dissolve in all of this stuff, but the propyl acetate is a very effective solvent for nitrocellulose. And essentially this is this all adds up to being a nitrocellulose lacquer in effect. And if we turn over the page, no, no, it goes to the next page. The last two ingredients are basic green and basic violet. So I have a pot of basic violet. I didn't buy the basic green. It's kind of expensive stuff. It's malachite green. And while you need a tiny amount of it, it didn't seem worth buying 50 grams and end up paying about 12 quid for postage. So all in all that comes to about 25 quid or, or so. So I might do this at some point. And, uh, but really this just regulates the uh, color. So basic violet is exactly what it sounds like. It's violet. And of course you add green to purple and you get blue. So that's our ingredients list. But, but most of the recipes you'll come across either on the internet or on YouTube, it seems to me. I haven't watched a lot of videos on, about this on YouTube. I didn't really want to spoil my own, I didn't want to copy anybody else. But um, I've wanted to do this video for a while, and that involved making my own blue. So I haven't bought the ingredients to make a one-to-one -one copy of the die chem, or indeed a copy of the die chem at all. What we're doing is mixing up a lacquer. So we have shellac flakes. These are de-waxed blonde shellac flakes. You can get clear shellac as well. I've never used this stuff before, and I've bought a big bag because I wasn't sure how much I would, would need. Uh, you don't need a lot, but it also gives me opportunity to play with this for, for other things, for doing a bit of woodworking and uh, just playing with finishes in general. Your solvent, which is methylated spirits, it's fairly 
cheap and readily available. And this stuff, which is crystal violet or gentian violet, you'll hear it referred to as, or basic violet. So this is the same stuff that's in the ingredients list on the MSDS for the die chem. First things first, we'll measure out the uh, weight of our jar that we're mixing our blue in. And that's 100 and... Sorry, 13.18... 113.18 grams. So, this shows up really nicely on the camera. But from behind, where I'm looking at it, the viewing angle is terrible. It's very, uh, very washed out. I can barely read it. So, never mind that. No, we've got 113 grams there. So we'll tear that. I did start off with... I think it was 40 grams of methylated spirits. And I think from memory it was about eight grams of shellac, or six, no, six grams of shellac. I think we'll go, be going a little thinner than that. And I ended up settling on about 10 to 1. So, you know, 10 grams of shellac to 100 grams of methylated spirits. We don't have 100 grams of methylated spirits left thanks to having to do this now three, three times. Uh, it didn't record the second take after the battery had died, so here we are. So we're going to measure out about 50 grams. So another 10 grams and we're good. Forty-eight. There we go, 50. More or less on the dot. The next thing we're going to add is our shellac flakes. So we pop this off of here. I'm going to give that a wipe over to make sure that we haven't got any um, any methylated spirits left on there. It does flash off fairly quick though, but uh, rather be careful. I want. I actually. I wonder. I wonder about using the lid to. Uh, No, we use the tray. I haven't got anything. I've got a little spoon or anything, which is what I should have brought down here. Um, Broad one from the kitchen, but never mind. So when you're doing this, you have the idea would be to break these up a little bit. Probably the bits you're going to use, because if you dump chunks of shellac like this in there, since it's all stuck together, it'll take forever to dissolve. So you either want to sort of sieve out the big bits. Oh, actually, tear that. Sieve out the big bits. So if we go for, what did I say, it was 50 grams, so 5 grams of shellac. Hmm. That's a little too much. So if we chuck a little bit back in there. 5 points, I mean, a quarter of a gram probably isn't going to make all that much difference. And then we can pour that into our little jar here. which our MSDS sheet from earlier will come in handy. So there we go. We can just pour those in. Ooh. Oh, goodness me. That couldn't have, that could have gone more wrong. I think we probably end up with about five grams in there, haven't we? That'll do. And now, all we need to do is, well, almost all we need to do is wait. The thing to do is to come along every so often, to come along every so often and shake this bottle. So you want to agitate this. Because as you can see, the shellac flakes will just sink to the bottom. And really, you want the solvent getting all the way around those. So the thing to do is come along every so often, shake the bottle. Leave it alone for 10 minutes, come back, shake it, until they're all dissolved. This is what we're left with after about half an hour, 45 minutes or so. And it's come out as a nice kind of amber colour. But that's not what we're aiming for, we want blue. And for that, we're going to need our pigment. This is the crystal violet, basic violet, gentian violet, whatever you want to call it. We're going to weigh this out with our scales. Now, previously I haven't bothered weighing this. I just sort of put some in, added some more, added some more until it looked, you know, a deep enough colour. But it would be nice to see how much we're putting in, how much that makes a difference. It, it it's, it's sub-grams. I mean, it's 
a very small amount indeed and so we're going to be using a very small pot and I've also got a couple of disposable well, uh, well lollipop sticks really because believe me you want everything that comes into contact with this with the exception of your liquid here to be disposable so let's measure out we'll turn this on first get zeroed out and if we measure out perhaps a well we can go down to about a twentieth of a gram maybe we should start there so if we can get 0.02 grams I'm not entirely confident I can actually before I do this if you can see there this stuff is actually green so if I pull this out it's got this sort of golden green colour now as soon as you put that in solution with something it will go bright blue or introduce any moisture to it at all it will go well bright purple sorry not bright blue so you want to put nothing there to actually register That's 0.04 grams, and I reckon, we're going to find out in a second, but I reckon that's... Oh, okay. See my gloves already? When we're done mixing this, when we're done mixing this, this, the whole thing, needs a thorough wipe down. The whole thing's going to have to be, you know, wet wipes all over it, then towel down with uh, some kitchen roll. Same goes for all of this. So let's put our 0 0.04 grams in there. I don't know if you can see the colours actually starting to change already. I wish I had two cameras of stuff like this. This would be would have been a that would have been a great one for you to be able to see that going in. I don't know if it's clear on camera, but they're almost like tendrils, it looks great. So we give that a swirl round. Oh wow, you can see already. That's gone very, very purple there. Very violet, in fact. Is that enough? Is that enough pigment? Do we need some more? Well, the thing to do would probably be to test this, wouldn't it? I do have to hand a couple of pieces of steel. So we'll use one of these as a comparison, so we'll put our we'll put our Dichem blue on one and our homemade blue on the other, but we'll perhaps do that in sections. So if I grab a brush, and this is one that I've used previously, so the thing about it is if you make homemade dye like this, in this way, that brush will go really stiff. Don't worry, as soon as you dip it in there, I'd say famous last words. As soon as you dip it in here, it'll go, go soft again. So there you go. So, that makes it a bit easier for myself. If we coat that. I have to admit, that seems very thin. Well, that may not be a good, that might not be a bad thing. Might not be a good thing either. Compared to the stuff that I've made before, that seems very thin. But I think the, the thickness actually would be you're better off having a slightly thinner layer than a really super thick layer of shellac. I really want to roll my sleeves up now and I can't, I'm covered in blue. But this is something, again, if you if you do this, you can play around. I might do a video of just testing different amounts of shellac flakes and methylated spirits. Because that seems to me that's come out very thin compared to what I've made before. So we'll give that a minute to dry. And see if that's, uh, yeah, that's more or less dry. And you can see the final result there. We've got a nice even coating of blue. And now it's time to try this against our dye chem. To do this, we have three steel bars, three bottles, and two brushes. Now, the reason there are two bottles here is that this was the one that I made as a test bottle for the video. And this is the one that we have just made. And obviously, we have our dye chem. They both have their own brushes, so we're not cross-contaminating because this mix is slightly different. It's a heavier mix, there's more shellac in there. I think there's more shellac in here. They both had a bit of time to settle now. So we're gonna take our brushes, lay some down on the bars that you've got in front of you and see how they do. So first the die chem. 
Now we know Dikem is fairly reliable. Unless you really do something wrong, it should go on just fine. You do have to clean your surfaces before you put this on. I mean, actually, no, obviously you don't have to. No one's going to force you, but um, if you don't give it rubbed down with a decent solvent, then you're probably going to end up with patches. So as you can see, it's gone on really quite nicely. And we'll give that some time to dry. We're going to have to give all these a bit of time to dry. This is our concoction, the one that we've made on video here. And if we lay that down... This does not go on as nicely by the looks of it. We'll leave that settle and hopefully flow out a bit. And the third one is the test batch that I made for this video. I'll try and do this so you can actually see it this time. And this is what leads me to believe that this one is thicker with shellac because it goes on much more nicely. That said, so far, this has flowed out quite quite well. But hopefully this will be a, a sort of reasonably good test of what works. It looks now like they've all dried. There is something strange going on with this batch. It's an odd kind of a colour. I wonder if there is something on the brush because this didn't happen. <laughs> this didn't happen before. So I do wonder what's what's going on with that. This one on the other hand has dried nice and blue actually. I thought this would be more of a purple. I suppose I didn't put as much as much in there as I did with the test batch in terms of the pigment. And this of course is the dye chem and that's just well just blue isn't it and it looks very nice so now we need to try scribing a line in them seeing how well they take so if we stack these together actually i don't think stacking these together like this is going to be the, the fairest way to do this so yeah this has come out it's got a very odd color to it look at that and some kind of contamination there isn't there but anyway, we'll scribe a line in the die chem. That looks fairly sharp. Might, uh, might be difficult to see on camera. Hopefully the focus is up to the job. Double check that. It's very, very difficult to get this camera to focus uh, while it's recording. Uh, without being behind it. So that's the die chem. This is our homemade batch. It's again, same thing. Just take the scribe and scribe line. You don't need to press in. The whole point is you're marking the die and not the substrate. And again, that's a fairly sharp line. Yeah, it's not quite as sharp, I wouldn't say, as the die chem. But it definitely serves the same purpose. I'm going to try and try this again. And there you go. And to me, that looks very, very similar to, to the finish on the die chem. There's not a torn or ragged edge there, which is good. And thirdly, our test batch. I'm sure there's something on that brush. This is not does not look right to me. But nonetheless, I'll try it anyway. Put a couple of lines on there. And yeah, to me that looks absolutely fine. That looks absolutely fine. So, really, to sum up, it doesn't matter which one of these you use. If buying a pot of a layout die is convenient, and it is convenient, these are, of course, you know, it's much more expensive than buying ingredients and making your own but you're less likely to end up looking like a smurf. So, you know, there's always a trade-off. These, on the other hand, are dirt cheap. Shellac flakes don't cost a lot. You don't need a lot of them. Have you seen how much? I mean, these are, I think, 60 or 80 mil bottles. 
Methylated Spirits is dirt cheap. The Gentium Violet for the amount you need, again. I'm, I'm assuming this stuff's stable. Uh, if someone wants to comment on that, someone who's a, a chemist wants to comment on this, or um, is more knowledgeable than I am about these things, I'm assuming that this is stable, so once you stick it on the shelf, you're you know, more or less set for life. This stuff obviously has a shelf life. This pot is easily about 18 months old. Still seems absolutely fine. Um, I mean, at some point it will go off. But for the moment, it seems to be, you know, it seems to be all right. These being shellac also probably have a shelf life. Someone who is more knowledgeable about that can comment as well. But from what I've seen, these are probably about a 12 month shelf life. Um, again, we'll, we'll sort of see. But the thing is, if you're not working in a, in a commercial workshop, you probably don't need to make these in big batches. So you can make a little bottle like this and you might get through that in a year. And if it dries up, it's not a big deal. Uh, then again, if you're going through loads of the stuff, it's probably even better. You, you know, save a fortune. The big test would be how resistant these are to various cutting fluids, solvents, and so on, uh, versus the dye chem. Maybe that's something we'll explore in another video. Likewise, perhaps doing a test of the mix for these. And I'm, I'm going to figure out, uh, after the video, what the hell's going on here. But yeah, trying to figure out what the, uh, the sort of the best ratio for this is for um, really shellac, because to be honest, this has 0.08 grams. So let's say, let's say a tenth of a gram of um, uh, dye. We probably do you uh, of the uh, violet. Sorry, not this one. This one. It's probably more than enough, and actually produces a better color, I think. So hopefully. Hopefully you've enjoyed that in some way, or uh, got something out of it, or you're going to go off and try and make your own, and if that's the case, do report back. Um, there are plenty of videos out there on how to do this, so you don't just have to watch this one, but from what I've seen, and from what I've read, it's all much of a muchness. It's make shellac, make it blue.